your attention, please. It's time for the final countdown. <laughs> the show starts in 10, 9, And we're back with another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break. Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports, Fantasy Football, and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our great shows. And if you can, please give us that five-star review wherever you get your podcast. Plus, if you could like, share, subscribe. Please subscribe below today so you'll be part of the over 550 subscribers right now we got on YouTube, and we're growing strong. So if you can do that, plus also support our good friends at, of course, LakersBall.com with Ox1947, his company, Symblades, Symblades with a Y.com. Our good friends, Laker Tom and Jamie Sweet at Lakerholics.com. Go ahead and hear them go back and forth all day long right there for you in writing course at lakerholics.com with the number one lakers blogger indeed our good friend stone hansen with the upside swings nba draft podcast of course the john mccallian channel on youtube go ahead and check out what he's talking about today right there for you at the john mccallian channel and if you could support all of that including our good friend sean grice magic man in the morning every friday morning right there for you on the lakers fast break channel it is sincerely appreciated and if you subscribe today, you also get the latest notifications on when we go live on the air with our post games. Also, Lakers History 101. Do you know your Lakers trivia? NBA observations, Lakers snack pack, and a whole bunch more. So go ahead and subscribe today. Truly, truly appreciate it if you do. And I've got a big thank you for all of you out there first off, because I was just reading my email just a few moments ago, and I just found out that we are just on the cusp of being one of the top 100 most popular basketball shows on Apple Podcasts. So we're just at 103. So if you can get us a little bit higher, a little bit in that top 100, still a great position to need, our highest ever. So we cannot thank you enough for supporting us right here at the Lakers Fast Break. But it is playing madness time. Playing madness time indeed. The Lakers found out today that the Minnesota Timberwolves will be a little bit lighter handed when they head to Los Angeles for tomorrow night's game against the Lakers in the first play in game for both teams. Hopefully it's the only one for the Lakers with the win because that will catapult them into the first round of the playoffs. But they did find out that Rudy Gobert was suspended for that game because of the things that were done during the timeout when he went after a fellow teammate and punched, I don't know, that's kind of like a push, but you know, you, you, you watch it on Twitter, you can determine from there, but it was uncalled for. Uh, it was broken up quickly, but still that uh, he was sent home at the time before the game even ended. Also the frustrations for Jaden McDaniels who fractured his hand on a wall, heading back to the locker room in the same quarter. So I will tell you, I will tell you right now that it's just, you know, I don't know if that's good or bad. We'll talk about that on today's show because if Gobert is out, that gives them a more dynamic offense. So we'll see what happens there. We'll talk about that. Plus also as well, the other play in matchups and some hypothetic playoff matchups coming up as well. But first I do want to introduce the man indeed who's here with me now. He is the host of the John McCallion channel. You got to go ahead and check out what he's talking about. Various topics, world topics, and small topics, and even gig topics at that. doesn't matter, big or small. The topics are always there, and the conversation's always great at the John McCallion channel. It is John McCallion. John, great to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Gerald. You know, it's going to be a good conversation. And uh, by the way, that intro at the beginning, the one that uh, the Melon intro was one hell of an intro. I thought we were bringing in New Year or something. <laughs> I know. I left it, I left that on from yesterday, but uh, I'm still trying to it was figure out. It pretty epic. 
Yeah, whoever when, I'm trying to figure out which ones I can get that are public domain that won't mm. get copyrighted. So I had to already nix a couple already that they've copyrighted on YouTube on YouTube. So yeah, we're just going from there, but we'll see what happens. Maybe we'll get an intro like we do on our audio podcast. We'll get one on our video as well in the not too distant future. But heading into Definitely. tomorrow's playing scenarios. There's two games going on tomorrow. Obviously, the first one we want to talk about is the most important to us right here at the Lakers Fast Break, and that is the Lakers against the Minnesota Timberwolves. The Timberwolves, they do come in with a really, uh, you know, like I said, a depleted roster. No Rudy Gobert, no Jaden McDaniels, no Nas Reed. All their big men, you know, it's outside of Car Anthony Towns. You know, they that still scares me because offensively with Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, you know, you've got a still very capable backups. What are your thoughts on this, my friend? Really losing Rudy Gobert in the playoffs has never been a bad thing before. Just ask Utah because when they had him in there, the other teams would go five out. And in the case of the Clippers, that worked to a T. So your thoughts on losing Rudy Gobert for tomorrow's game the playing game against the Lakers tomorrow night. Yeah, definitely a really good point. Some that I wanted to get into as well. Um, I can't, I was doing some light reading earlier today and, uh, you know, at surface value, you would think that, you know, losing or uh, Minnesota losing uh, Gobert, uh, you know, would, would help the Lakers tomorrow. But um, I can't remember what the exact stat was, but I think um, Minnesota was like plus 10 or plus 15. If you're into analytics, that, you know, they're actually better off without Gobert on the floor. Um, the thing is that Lakers have size, and Minnesota is not going to have much size because they're not going to have uh, Gobert because of suspension. They're not going to have Nas Reed. And, um, and I think they're uh, – yeah, so they're going to be a pretty short lineup. So it's Carl good for Anthony AD. Towns, he's going to have to play a lot uh, more on AD, which could get him in foul trouble. Right. He's not He's not a really good defender. He's, he's uh, He tends to get into foul trouble pretty quickly. Um, so it's good for AD. Um, you know, because if Gobert was there, obviously they're going to put him on AD. So um, I think I think it's, uh, you know, really good for AD. And, and also AD can pr- play on a perimeter, which would create, uh, you know, open lanes for LeBron, even D- uh, D'Lo, D'Angelo Russell to attack the rim. So overall, I, I think it's going to be good. Um, but I just hope that, you know, the Lakers don't take their foot off the pedal, say, oh, Gobert and, you know, um, what's your name? Um, McDaniels, they're not going to play, you know, which are yes. some of their best players. So hopefully they don't, you know, try to take it easy like they have this week and uh, take the game for granted because, you know, I think I'd rather play Memphis, who doesn't have Steven Adams, than play, uh, you know, Denver, who has Jamal Murray, uh, Jokic, and, uh, you know, they have, they have pretty decent depth. So, yeah, we need to win tomorrow, basically. <laughs> Absolutely. And the reason why, of course, as well, like you said, it just allows for a much better matchup, I think, because Denver, with, with their full roster healthy going into it, you never want to take chances with that, although they have played well against Jokic over the years. But mm-hmm. Jaden McDaniels is their best perimeter defender. 6'10", yes. long arms. He, he is definitely one of the better defenders in the league, and he would have been the one tasked to guard LeBron and at some time switch off on AD. So losing him is just as big for the Minnesota Timberwolves as not having Rudy Gobert in the lineup as well, I do think. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, you know, one of the other points that I wanted to bring up was that the game is in L.A. It's here. You know, whenever you have home court advantage, role players tend to play better. So yes. I think that's another advantage that we have as well. Absolutely. And that's a good point. There's something that uh, we've seen, the, you know, the increase in activity and the increase in uh, success that we've seen from the trade deadline as far as the number of individuals, the lineup is a little bit more secure. It's a little bit more depth added. I started out the season, I noted this today as far as a response, an email to, uh, you know, someone who actually listens and, and watches the show and, you know, I responded to that individual by saying and reaffirming that at one time the Lakers had, in my opinion, the worst number three to 15 roster in the NBA when they started out this season. And over the course of time with those trades have evolved into something much more competitive. Great to see Austin Reeves has come into his own and this is going to be a test for him as far as you could consider this the playoff starting now for all intents and purposes and just seeing where he will take his game going forward is going to be great to see. And do the Lakers have exactly what you need as far as beyond 
AD and LeBron to get them far in the playoffs? We're going to find that out. We're going to see if those trades that were made are going to work out. We'll see. But I think for this matchup, like you said, at home, the reserves should play much better. But then again, when they were in Minnesota just a few days ago, it didn't look too bad then. The right, I guess, I think overall, outside of maybe the Milwaukee game and maybe another one or two games, that was probably one of the best games of the year for the Lakers. Is when they went into Minnesota, they destroyed them in that third quarter. They put Rui, the coaching changes, the adjustments that were made, and typically a quarter that the Lakers do bad in. The change to Rui Hashimura on Cat worked beautifully, and we saw from there a, a really dominating performance in that second half. Yeah, definitely. Um, and also, let's not act like uh, D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, and Van, uh, Jared Vanderbilt, you know, they all they don't have anything to prove because, you know, they're not going to come out and say it, but this is a revenge game for them because, you know, uh, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I actually know Vanderbilt played for Utah. Was it Beasley and D'Lo that played for in Minnesota? Beasley and D'Lo, yeah. Yeah. So Beasley and D'Lo played for Minnesota and also, of course, the band himself, the Vandalorian. Vanderbilt. All three of them played. Jared Vanderbilt played for Minnesota. They were involved in the Gobert trade, which traded them to Utah. Right. There we and, go. And then they, from there, they went over to Los Angeles from there. But, you know, getting those three individuals uh, that have migrated over, we see Beasley. He's starting to shoot a little bit better after he was into quite a funk. But with Beasley, that's what who that's who he is. He's going to be a very sporadic shooter. He's going to be a very streaky shooter. D'Lo has to provide some type of levity and some type of uh, normalcy to the offense and help be able to get that offense flowing in order for the Lakers, I think, to succeed long term. They can get by on a LeBron AD performance tomorrow night, but going forward in the playoffs, they need consistency from the guys three through 15. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, definitely it's uh, all all hands on board. Um and, uh, you know, I, li- I like our depth, um, even with, you know, the fact that we added uh, Tristan Thompson and Shaq Harrison. I don't know if he uh, has any relation. I, 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 <laughs> I knew you were going right. to go there. <laughs> it's all right. You, Tristan Thompson is about as washed as you can be. Uh, Shaq Harrison well, has bounced around the league. He was given uh, added on a second year to his contract. I will tell everybody out there, he was given a second year non-guaranteed. Uh, that the Lakers may be able to utilize for a trade scenario. It's about two and a half million dollars, but he was at, at that on there. Maybe a chance to go ahead and compete for roster spot next season, but it is non-guaranteed, but it's something that in case they need to use it for a trade during the summer, they added that on there. So I thought that was actually a pretty good move for them to go ahead and do that. But Shaq Harrison providing some defense and maybe some playmaking in case Dennis Schroeder's not able to go or you're not getting what you're like there. But I'm telling you again, my friend, if you're putting in Tristan Thompson at a key point in the playoff game, you're in serious trouble. Well, I guess what I was trying to get 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 at is that I'm glad that they signed him because they they do have someone or a couple of players now they can use in emergency situations. Um, because you know, other than that, we really don't have anyone outside of AD. When I like I like how Wenyan plays with a lot of energy, but um I don't know. I'm not saying Tristan Thompson is what better than Wendy Gabriel, but I'm glad that we added, you know, some big men. And also, you know, it's really important to know that Tristan Thompson hasn't played all season. So yep. and just because he goes out there doesn't mean he's going to start dominating. But yeah, just, just because like he's been playing that, 35 minutes at the YMCA does not mean he can go out there and play NBA basketball. Yeah, and also just because he's not, you know, he's LeBron's former teammate doesn't mean that, you know, he's going to play really good. But I'm just glad that we have a big body that we can tell, hey, say, hey, go stand in front of the basket and don't move. Like, you know, I, I like that aspect of it. I'm not expecting much from him, but I'm glad that we signed him. I still would have preferred Boogie, or I know the Knicks signed, I believe, Isaiah Roby, who I thought had a lot more promise and obviously has been playing a little off and on this year. So I really think that uh, probably would have been better. But, you know, all things considered, again, if these you are going to these guys to play any conceivable minutes for you or to be right. active on your roster for playoff games, you're in serious trouble. And that means that you're just reaching for whatever possibility, either through injury or just bad play. Rewrite winning Gabriel, great energy, but really not much of a rim protector at all. Mo Bamba, you know, Mo Bamba, I think, has not 
been able to even get any kind of confidence in Darvin Ham uh, at all as far as Darvin Ham believing in him. So we've obviously seen the fact that he barely played a few seconds in yesterday's game was the fact He didn't that, look good out there, though. Yeah, <laughs> so that's the problem. He's not looked good at all, which is a, a shame because of you know if you have to sign him, it's going to be just like you did for Shaq Harrison. You're only si- uh, extending his contract for that $10 million just to use it in a, in a trade. But it is the Lakers in Minnesota. Outside, again, the weaknesses if AD gets in foul trouble, I think the Lakers do have a good chance tomorrow to go ahead and move on, but I'm not taking anything for granted because as you and I both know with this up and down season and you and I have messaged each other back and forth over the course of the year, our sorrows and our pain when it comes to this team that I don't, I don't think either of us should take anything for granted tomorrow night. Yeah, definitely. And um, I was going to say that I agree with Joe's comment. He says he prefers to use, Bamba, since he's actually played, uh, you know, majority of the season, I know he's had. The thing is that I think, um, you know, he, I think he would look a little bit more playable if he didn't get injured, if he got, little, you know, some more reps with the Lakers under Darvahan's system. Well, um, let's say Anthony Davis does not get hurt or does not get foul trouble. They right. are increasing AD's minutes. You will see him go to 32, 35, 37, maybe even close to 40 in a playoff type scenario. Yeah, definitely. It's, uh, you know, we want AD to play as much as he can, you know, without getting hurt, obviously. But um, I don't know if, you know, I guess it depends on the matchup. Uh, you know, if we're going to play against Denver, I'd rather have, you know, someone like Mo Bamba, you know, who's, who's uh, you know, he's not a very experienced defender, but he's also a stronger body than Gabriel. So really depends on the matchup. I think Gabriel will be fine. Well, actually, we a lot better to play against a team like Memphis because Memphis, you know, they're they, they like to run. And, uh, you know, Gabriel will be better fit there. But, again, depends on the matchup. Absolutely. And let's hope it stays uh, with the Lakers meeting meeting up with Memphis. Again, just finishing off. Because if they don't win on Tuesday night, they have to play on Friday night. They'll host a game of whoever the winner between New Orleans and Oklahoma City is. And, once again, it's NBA Observations. It's Gerald Glassford along with John McCallion from the John McCallion channel on YouTube. Appreciate everybody watching and listening. It's so much to everybody out there in the chat. We truly appreciate everybody out there. The best Lakers chat that's out there right here at the Lakers Fast Break. One thing I do want to ask, going into some of the other playing games besides the Lakers and Minnesota, earlier the game before will be Atlanta at Miami in the 7th, 8th game there. Your thoughts on this, because Atlanta is a team that, you know, after they made that conference finals run, actually both teams are similar. Hear me out. Both teams had recent conference finals runs. Both teams have not found the same success since then, which is kind of interesting because you see that, again, they have the majority of the players uh, from those conference title runs, but have never been able to get back to that promise. line. now for only Miami, it's only been one season, but still they've been nowhere near the conference final teams we saw last year and the in the year that Atlanta got in 2 years ago 3 years ago I guess yeah um it, it's it's kind of strange what what happened to Atlanta um with with Miami it's just um you know it's they have a mixture of you know young and you know Jimmy Butler's getting up there in age but uh, Atlanta I, I expected better from them but also you know we've been hearing a lot about the turmoil that uh you know supposedly Trey Young has had with the coaches and they've had like 50 different coaches in the last few seasons so uh, I don't know what's what's going on there but for that one I expect Miami to win um Eric Eric, Eric Spolster is really good at coach he knows what he's doing and that team for the most part has played um you know together for you know, outside of Kyle Lowry, you know, for, for a couple of seasons now. But, you know, as far as making a deep run in the playoffs go, I don't see Miami doing that. But, again, you know, we, we've seen crazier things. We have seen crazier things. You know, playoff time is Jimmy Butler time. Yeah. And uh, we've seen Jimmy Butler was one of those players that I really like for the fact that he shines brightest on the biggest spotlights. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. there's other players that we've talked about over the years, like James Harden and some others, Chris Paul, who have not had that time in the sun and have actually withered under the spotlight. Jimmy Butler has been an individual, for the most part, that has really thrived in those playoff and those really big limelight-type scenarios. So I, I, I think that Miami is going to really do well tomorrow against Atlanta, even though Atlanta, again, a nice roster, but it's just not fitting well together, and maybe they're going to have to make some changes in the offseason there. 
or if they can, they maybe can, you know, they still have a chance to go ahead and sneak into the playoffs after the Friday game as well. But the Lakers, again, Minnesota, I really think that, again, we're going to see a matchup tomorrow night. But are you more afraid now with Gobert out of the game? Like you said, they're a better team, sounding what your stats are from what you were sounding off earlier, that the team is better without Gobert. For me, Domi, Domi, the reason why I'm a little bit more worried is because um, this team, the Lakers team, has shown that they they take or they play down to their competition. Um, so if they think that, you know, they're, it's going to be an easier game just because Minnesota doesn't have Gobert and Daniels or McDaniels going in tomorrow and they can, you know, they come out flat in the first half, then, you know, that, that gives me, you know, the cause for concern. But uh, now we shouldn't have, uh, you know, keyword being shouldn't. We shouldn't have trouble winning that game tomorrow. Absolutely. Uh, and I'll just say this. I think I, I, it should be the Lakers. The Lakers are going to be favored. And, and the Lakers, if they're able to get Cat in some foul trouble and try to get one of those games from Anthony Evers where he's a volume shooter, but not really, really consistent. If he's shooting like, let's say, 10 of 25, 10 of 28 shooting t- tomorrow, if he goes on a really binge where he's just chucking up everything he can, the Lakers could find it a lot easier tomorrow if that's the case. But we'll see. Again, I'm looking forward to it. You see Atlanta and Miami uh, after that. Then the next day after the Atlanta-Miami game first and the Lakers of Minnesota, you have after that coming up, you have Chicago at Toronto and Oklahoma City at New Orleans. Chicago at Toronto. Chicago, as we've seen, has been very underwhelming this year after a nice run last year and and some promise shown. But seems like with a lot of these individuals on Chicago, it's just not meshing anymore. The DeRozan, Levine, Vucevic, you know, they it looks all good on paper, but it was barely enough to get it done in a bottom half of the East that's really not that good. Yeah, I think Chicago part of their uh, – the reason why they haven't been really you know, able to form some type of rhythm is because, you know, they've had a lot of injuries throughout the season. Um, adding Pat Bev helps them a little bit. Um, you know, I, I know how Joe feels about Pat Bev, but, um, you know, it helps. It had, you know, they're kind of a they're kind of a young team that doesn't really have, you know, a lot of dog in them other than Caruso. So I think Pat Bell helps them in terms of, like, mentality, but in terms of on the, field, on the floor play, not much. Um, I think – I don't know. Um, I, I see Toronto winning that game. I know that's probably an unpopular opinion, but I think t- Toronto as a team is, is more cohesive and they have more rhythm than Chicago. That's just a bunch of guys hoping that they win some basketball games. Well, that's We'll see what happens, but Toronto is a team I also think has underwhelmed this season because, you know, you look at the roster there, a lot of athletes, a lot of length, like six, seven, six, eight. It, you know, players that are there really with a lot of length, uh, just their shooting has just not been a very, they're not a great shooting team, which is probably to their detriment as well. Uh, they don't have really much size in the middle, but they've got Podal, who is uh, from the Dick trade deadline, who's helped them out a little bit there. But yeah, we'll see what happens. Uh, I, I do think whoever wins between Chicago and Toronto is not going to be able to advance much farther than that because after that, you have Oklahoma City and New Orleans playing for the ninth and 10th place teams right there as far as that matchup is concerned. Oklahoma City has exceeded the expectations of many out there, especially after Chet Holmgren went down even before the season started. Shea Gilgis-Alexander is on my MVP ballot, as we pointed out earlier today, as far as I sent out for the ballots for the Lakers Fast Break crew, and we'll be announcing that. In fact, I'm going to give... Sean, the next time he drops down a Lakers snack back, the the, the uh, go ahead to go ahead and announce the MVP from the Lakers fast break staff on the next uh, snack pack, whether he ever does. Uh, so we'll go ahead and allow him to go ahead and do that. That uh, go, I give that to you, my friend. I'll take another subject, another on another podcast as far as that's concerned. But that category, I'll give you the MVP for good conversation. But I heard he's is. still in. Tra- I heard he's still stuck in traffic. Yes, he's still stuck in traffic right now, but I did want to go ahead and say it is Oklahoma City and New Orleans. Shea Gilgis-Alexander versus Brandon Ingram, who's been playing out of his mind as well. This is going to be a matchup between two teams that, you know, they're, they don't have key players. Zion, who looks nowhere near in shape, or conditioning has also been an issue, and he's nowhere near coming back. 
you see Oklahoma City who has like 10,000 draft picks and has such a bright future, but they thought their time is now, and it could be now for at least one game. I'm picking the upset on that one. I'm picking Shea Gilgis Alexander to go off in New Orleans. Yeah, I actually had New Orleans winning that game, so I'm glad that you know we were we're on opposite sides here. Um, I mean, just because Zion's not there, I, I still think that New Orleans has um, more than enough to win the game. I think they have an experienced leader in McCollum, whereas you know Oklahoma City they're pretty inexperienced. They have you know they have youth, but so does New Orleans. So you know you have McCollum leading the team, especially you know down down the wire in crucial moments. Um, you know you have. Herb Jones, and you have Troy Mur- uh, not, not Was it uh, Troy Trey Murphy? Murphy. Trey, Trey Murphy, Murphy. yeah. He's I'm like, Troy the, Murphy used to play for Golden awesome. State. He's got the, he's got the <laughs> yeah, for Golden State. But this is Trey yeah. Murphy the third, uh, and it's just he's got the best name out there for basketball, for a guy who shoots nothing but three-pointers and uh, does, very yeah. athletic. It just Yeah, just he's got a bright future there as well. But I really think uh, that Oklahoma City will pull off the upset in this occasion. I don't think they'll get any farther than that because whoever they face off against Minnesota and the Lakers on the Friday game will beat them. But I think we're going to see an awesome performance from Shea Gilgis Alexander. This is their first time really in the spotlight, and I think they're going to get it done. Yeah, again, I got New Orleans. I think I think uh, you know they got Ingram and they got McCollum. Um, and you know, they got a really good supporting cast. I think OKC is going to play hard, but I think it's going to be you know, they're going to, I think they're going to come up short. I think I've got Toronto like you in the uh early game on that, and I've got Miami mm-hmm. in the early game on Tuesday, and of course, we've got the Lakers, of course, on Tuesday night. So, as we should, <laughs> as we should, as we should indeed. But uh, once again, it is NBA observations, it is Gerald Glasser along with the host of the John McHalian channel on YouTube. Please subscribe today. It is John McHalian. And John, you wanted to talk some certain playoff scenarios. I know I will be going, once we the playoffs are more finalized, we will be going into more detail on the playoffs on this show, on this channel. But I know you wanted to share your thoughts on it, my friends. So go for it. Where do you want to start first as far as the already made playoff scenarios that are already happening? Yeah, I like the um, I like how Phoenix and Clippers are matching up the first round. You know, one of them is gonna go home, so that's good for the Lakers. And obviously, like all the the standing or all the things that we talk about the playoffs today, you know, is is basically related to um, the Lakers' path to the finals. Hopefully, so I think Phoenix, either Phoenix or Clippers going out, is really important for the Lakers. Um, other than that, do you really fear? Do you really fear Denver and Golden State? I don't fear any team in the Western Conference. I am concerned. Uh, you know, if you told me, okay, if you lined up all the teams in the Western Conference right now, you know, from from one to ten, you know, the Lakers have as good a chance to beat any of them, but they also have as good a chance to lose to any of them. Mm-hmm. Are you know, I uh, would you favor the Lakers over any other team in the Western Conference? That I'm not so sure because Phoenix. We have to see how the Booker Durant matchup. If Booker Durant click. Like they've been clicking on those, you know, those few games that they've already played together, that could spell trouble for any team in the Western Conference. Because if those two are hitting for forty each, I don't think any team in the Western Conference is going to beat that. But we'll see if they're not shooting as well, or if Durant gets hurt again, or Booker gets hurt, you know, that could change things uh, entirely. I think that Golden State, Golden State, as we saw yesterday, as they destroyed Portland by fifty-six. Thanks a lot, Portland, for nothing. Uh, you know, when it comes to Golden State, you know, could they get their their je ne sais quoi, as I used yesterday, all their mojo back from their their world championship run last year? Are they starting to get it together for that now that Wiggins is, is going to be coming back and getting be playing back into shape? Could we see a scenario like that or is it just too little too late? And do they really have that mindset on the road? Because they're going to be playing on the road quite a bit as far as be more. Then they would have to have they have more road games ahead of them in this playoff run than they do home games. And you and I both know with their awful road record, that's going to be a challenge for them this season. Yeah, I think uh the team that I'm I'd be concerned most about, you know, matching up is Golden State because Golden State, you know, their system is uh it's they they just move the ball really well. I'm not saying Phoenix doesn't, but Phoenix, uh they're so top heavy and you know they don't they don't have much depth. So, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, if you have – okay, now now that the Lakers actually have a few wings, I think we can throw them on Durant and uh, Booker. 
Um, I'm not too concerned about Chris Paul because he's up there in age. Um, the thing is that, you know, if you direct all of your attention to Booker and Durant, then, you know, Aiton's going to be open a lot. So that's that's one area of concern that I have. But for me, I think matchup-wise, I think Golden State would be the most difficult matchup just because of their ability to shoot and move the ball really quickly. Absolutely. I mean, the thing is, you got to guard out in the perimeter. And as we've seen from the Lakers in these past couple of weeks, even though they did have for quite a stretch here there for over two months, they had the number one defense in the league. In these past couple of weeks, they've been they've been allowing a lot of three point shots in the perimeter, and you can't do that with Golden State. If those guys are bombing and those guys are hitting, they're gonna like you saw yesterday in Portland. They're mm. gonna take you out of the game rather quickly. Yeah, man, that they were just throwing up so many bombs it looked like a war zone. I still can't believe they almost won by sixty points. But yep. you know, then again, Portland wasn't trying, so there's that. But um, but yeah, I think a Sacramento and Golden State's gonna be you know an interesting matchup. Um, I, I know that Sacramento, you know, they're they play with each other really well. They click, but at the same time, you know, they're going up against a team who has won, you know, multiple championships. So, you know, that, that playoff experience is going to kick in as long as they all stay healthy. And um, I think, um, you know, I got Golden State in five, honestly, with that, that one. The the thing is though, with that, I feel bad for Sacramento in a way. You know, yeah. like the beam they've won the for the first time. In 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 what 16, 17 years, something like it's that. It's been a while, yeah. It's been a while uh, that you know they've they've not been in the playoffs, and now they get the playoffs and they get to face against the wor current world champions, Golden State Warriors. But they would have not been favored against the Warriors. They would have not been favored against the Suns. They would have not been favored against the Clippers. They would not been favored against the Lakers. I don't even think they would have been favored against the Timberwolves had the Timberwolves been fully healthy. So. You know, I feel bad in a way for Sacramento that they've achieved so much success, but so many people think so little of them. Yeah, they might surprise us. Um, you know, they might. I'm not going to say they might beat Golden State, but I think they might take uh, Golden State to a game seven, which would be really interesting. So, um, you know, as far as that series goes, um, it, it can get really interesting. And then I think, uh, you know, even the Phoenix and the Clippers series might get interesting, especially if Paul George, you know, miraculously heals quickly and, um, you know, comes back, you know, in the game three or game four or even game five. So um, I, I've, I've been hearing a lot of, you know, ESPN and um, all these different analysts on YouTube saying, oh, you know, the Phoenix is going to have, you know, it's going to be quick work, light work of the Clippers, but I don't think it's going to be that easy for Phoenix. And then um, Denver and, uh, you know, if it's Denver, who, who do you think would be would give more trouble for Denver, OKC or uh, New Orleans? Uh, I'd say New Orleans. I'd say New yeah. Orleans because uh, New Orleans at least has a big body that they can throw with Valanciunas at Jokic, get five fouls on him. Also, he could stretch the floor, Valanciunas can a little bit. I think that Valanciunas is underutilized in that New Orleans offense. He often gets overlooked which is a shame. I know he's not very mobile. I know he's not great on the defensive end, but the guy can right. shoot and he has some, and he can get, and he has a big body that can, that can really uh, get some pro give you problems on the inside as far as rebounding is concerned. So if he's utilized correctly, he can help you in a, in a playoff scenario when things start to slow down and the emphasis more on ball movement, the emphasis more on who's executing the most on offense in the half court which concerns me about the Lakers because as you and I both know this season, the Lakers have been very hit and miss on executing in the half court. I know that transition, transition, transition is what I always talk about, but in the playoffs, it's really harder to have that kind of level of pace that you did in a regular season because the defense on both sides is going to be much more focused in the tune to trying to stop each other. Yeah. What if, what if Minnesota beats the winner of goal of, uh, OKC and uh, New, uh, New Orleans, do you think Gobert on Jokic will give them trouble as well if they match up against Minnesota? That's, again, you've got two big bodies you could realistically throw out there with Cat and, of course, Gobert. Now, Cat, you're just using it for fouls because Cat is not really good at all on the defensive end, but he's still seven feet tall, 270 pounds, so he could still go ahead, at least uh, you know, try to go ahead and, and, and body up on Jokic. I think that Denver also, like Sacramento, in many ways, is not getting a ton of respect heading into this season. I mean, I called I called Denver. Joe and I, I believe, called Denver as far as winning the Western Conference, as far mm -hmm. as being able to be number one 
but we didn't have I don't I didn't have them going out to the Western Conference Finals as I don't I had I didn't have them going in the finals to represent the Western Conference. I forget if Joe did as but I'd have to ask him. But uh, I just think that Jokic can only take you so far. This team, even though it's balanced, still doesn't have much in the way of reserve help. And even though the reserves aren't counted on as much as, uh, as they are the regular season, there's still a factor there, especially if someone gets hurt on the Denver side. Yeah, I think I was listening to the ESPN uh, radio earlier today. They were talking about how some guy at the beginning of the season put, he bet 25 bucks that Sacramento would win the division. And he won ten thousand dollars, which I think is a crazy bet. I mean, it's it's obviously paid off, but yeah. um, you know, some sometimes you know stuff like that happens. I've actually seen that before here at the uh, casinos where somebody puts in that, you know, up oh, here to cash out. There you go, cash out, <laughs> literally indeed. But once again, it is NBA observations. I'm here with the host of the John McCallion Channel. It is John McCallion. Still, Adam Hurley, Magic Man, everybody's been out. Thomas, uh, you've been great out there. Of course, Joe's out there as well. Truly appreciate everyone taking the time to check us out today right there on the best Lakers chat room that's out there, Lakers Fast Break, as we talk some NBA observations. Is there any other matchups you're you're looking at right now? I mean, I know, again, we're going to be going into a bit further detail later this week once the finalized uh, matchups are there, but... Any thoughts on uh, exactly any other matchups in the Western Eastern Conference that stick out to you? Um, I'm looking at the bracket right now. Um... I'd say for me, Philadelphia. Now, nah, actually, I think Philadelphia's going to the Cleveland and the New York Knicks. I think will be a little bit more tested than I think a lot yeah. of people will be hoping for or counting on. I think. You are people are underestimating Jalen Brunson and the New York Knicks. I really think are are selling themselves short. It depends on how well or how quickly Julius Randle gets back in the lineup if he's ready to go because he, he's coming off that sprained ankle. But if he's going to be good to go, I think New York has a viable chance of beating Cleveland. I'm not favoring them, but I'm certainly not giving them no chance at all because I think Jalen Brunson, as we saw last season with Dallas against the Suns, he could be a valuable player and be someone who could really take the team to another not to another level. Yeah, like uh, I really like Cleveland. I like, you know, Donovan Mitchell going there. I think, uh, you know, with Evan Mobley and some of the other young talent that they have, Jared Allen, um, uh, Dollar, uh, I forgot his name, was it Darius Harland? As far as, oh, Darius Garland. Darius Garland, thank you. Yeah, I knew I, knew, I was off the name, but, um, you know, I think they have a really good, uh, starting unit there. Um, but I think Milwaukee or a uh, boss is going to come out of these, you know, barring any injuries. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I, what I really want to see in the East is, uh, is, you know, Milwaukee and Boston, you know, East conference finals. Uh, but who do you think is going to come out of the East, Gerald? Well, I think Milwaukee, if, uh, Middleton is healthy and that's the key thing. Let's say both teams are healthy. If both teams are healthy, because Middleton uh, came up lame a couple days, uh, well, that's about a, uh, about a little less than a week ago. But if, if everybody's healthy, all things considered, I think Milwaukee does beat Boston, I think, uh, or Philadelphia, as far as whoever that matchups against uh, Milwaukee. I think that Milwaukee is just too strong right now. I think Milwaukee, uh, they, they can hit you from the outside and then they can hit you from the inside. Plus, they've got shot blockers in Portis, of course, mm-hmm. Giannis Tentacumpo, and a guy who's Brooke being considered, well, that's what I was going to say, a guy who's being considered for Defensive Player of the Year, Brooke Lopez. Those guys all can block shots. They can all start the transition. And, you know, Giannis in the transition is just absolutely frightening for the mm-hmm. other team. And if they're hitting their threes at all, if if Drew Holiday is, is anywhere near a consistent shooter in the playoffs – on top of his great defense, because you know he loves to shoot. They let him shoot. They 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 understand he he does so much as far as our playmaking and their defending. So they say, you know what? You could chuck the chuck the ball as much as you want, and he does. But if he's shooting anywhere near consistently, man, that's a tough team to beat. That's absolutely a tough team to beat. I'm You're also forgetting about, done, G- but it's tough. <laughs> You're also forgetting about Jay Crowder. Yeah, well, could, you yeah. know, uh, Milwaukee. I, I know he's not, you know, he's not someone that we like, but you know, he can still put up a shot, and um, you know, he can still, you know, play play on defense. Yeah, that's that's part of the. Uh, they've got a decent enough back roster as far as their 
their depth. Wes Matthews, you know, they, they've got some guys out there that, that are veterans, veterans who know what they're doing, veterans who can provide you with those crucial minutes, those key things down the stretch. Yeah, Milwaukee looks like they're going to be a tough out with, for any team, whether it's the Lakers, Suns, Boston Celtics, Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, you know, they are Milwaukee right now, the favorites here in Vegas. And I, I, I would not dispute that right now. Yeah. Um, also, do you think uh, Doc Rivers is going to have another choke job again this, this time around? Well, it, I don't know <laughs> if it would be a choke job per se, but when you're the number three team in the Eastern Conference and you've got two teams that are actually favored above you in the Eastern Conference, you know, that, that upper half right there, my friend, that's a murderous row. You've got uh, three teams – I think three teams that if they were all on an even plane, all those three teams, Philadelphia, Boston, and Milwaukee, they would all be favored above any team in the West Western Conference. Let's say Phoenix comes out, or let's say Denver, let's say the Lakers come out of it. Let's say the Lakers come out of the, the West. All those teams, those three teams would be favored above any team in the Western Conference right now in an in the NBA Finals matchup. Yeah, and I like uh, Ryan's comment. He said D'Lo's ready, key to how deep this Lakers team go, and LeBron can be playing hero ball and we good. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, as long as LeBron and AD put up the numbers that we're expecting them to, I think D'Lo's going to be the wild card because, you know, Beasley, he's a shooter, and, you know, shooters are streaky. I think Rui, um, you know, he's going to put up his 10 points a game, whatever he does. Um, but, you know, I'm expecting, you know, our wings, Rui, uh, Bandalorian, and uh, Troy Brown Jr. to, you know, play play some defense. Um, and I think uh, you know, I genuinely believe that, you know, d is going to be um, – he's going to be the wild card. You know, if he plays well, they will make a deep run. If he doesn't, then, you know, it's going to be a lot tougher to make a run. Yeah, because I think you need three consistent players in the playoffs to, as far as is concerned. I think that's something that the Lakers still have a little bit of question on. Uh, d is he the answer? They gave up on him pretty quick in Minnesota – so be that that being that that's the case, you know, he's shot very well for us. He's played pretty good for us. He just has to stay on the court. So we'll see what happens again. You know, it's going to come down to, I think the Lakers tomorrow night. I think that'll start the momentum going. If the Lakers have a dominant win tomorrow, I think we can feel a lot more confident that they match up pretty good against Memphis. Although Ja Guarding John ja Morant, figuring out the way that the team is going to guard John ja Morant is going to be a nightmare for Darvin Ham to really try yeah. to talk up. But I can see it happening if Triple J gets in foul trouble constantly. The Lakers could actually go ahead and pull that off. But we'll see what happens. But it does start tomorrow night with Minnesota and the Lakers. Again, no Rudy Gobert as he was suspended for one game for his actions uh, detrimental to the team. We also know that uh, Jaden McDaniels, the primary defender out there for the Minnesota Timberwolves, is also gone for the playoffs, most likely, most likely because of a fractured hand, although he could play with a cast on. You never know. He's not exactly <laughs> asked to shoot all that often. So your thoughts on a game tomorrow night between the Minnesota Timberwolves and the Los Angeles Lakers? I say the Lakers get it done. Yeah, I think they'll get it done too. Um, I just hope they don't take it for granted and play down to the competition just because Gobert and, you know, um, uh, McDaniels uh, doesn't um, – he's, he's like, like you said, he might he might be crazy enough to go out there and play with the cast and just, you know, be asked to stick his hand up. Uh, but, but yeah, um, I, I think we'll get it done. I'm hopeful. Absolutely. A solid play by Reeves tomorrow. Hoping for that as well. If, yep. if the Lakers can find a consistent number three. That's the thing. If they can find someone that's going to get them 17 to 20 each and every time out, if they can count on that, if they can get two guys behind LeBron and AD to get you 17 to 20 each and every time out, that's even better. But we'll see. John, it's been so fantastic having you aboard. But before we head it out, you got to hit up your channel, my friend, and tell everybody why they got to check out your channel whenever you go on the airwaves with your awesome YouTube channel. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um... If you, I don't um, I, I get a lot of comments saying that, you know, people like the channel because, you know, streams are, you know, they're honest, they're quote unquote real. As they say, you know, I don't really sugarcoat anything. 
Um, you know, well, we got right Joe now, here. He's as real as it gets on this channel. <laughs> I can tell you that. Uh, so yeah, uh, right now, um, I've begun documenting my weight loss journey. I've actually lost 30 pounds the last three months. So, you know, if you're into personal development type of content, self-improvement, you know, that's basically the majority of the content you'll see, you'll find on my channel. If you're if that's what you're interested in. Congratulations on that, my friend. I know Thank the you. journey is still continuing, but I'm very happy for you that you've lost 30 pounds so far. Of course, the journey continues. I love your gig comments, though. The stuff that you guys talk about within the gig universe, uh, the gig yeah. universe, as far as uh, and, and people, I'm using the language there, the lingo, but that's you know just the Uber Eats, the that type of environment, as far as you know, going out and living that lifestyle because it is a lifestyle. It's a it's a community in and of itself, from what I've seen. Yeah, it really is. Uh, I've actually met a ton of, you know, really good people that I actually talk offline, like we text each other. And, uh, you know, it's, a, it, it's, I think, I think the reason for that is because, you know, we don't, it's not a W2, we don't have coworkers, you know, we're all just kind of like, uh, you know, sitting in our cars most of the day. And obviously, as you know, I don't really do gig work anymore. I, I work full time. I have a W2 job now. So I do that. But when I was doing it, uh, you know, we would just, uh, just talk a lot offline and, you know, I still do to this day. So, uh, yeah, it's a really tight knit community because, um, you know, a lot of times you can get lonely and, um, you know, these companies want us divided. They don't want us to come together and, you know, quote unquote fight against them. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a channel full of inspiration, a full channel full of hope, a channel full of knowledge and also great conversation. It is a John McCallion channel. John, you know, you're always welcome here. I always see you in the chat. And I always see you here, my friend, in the chat. It's great <laughs> to have you. You're always on our emails, so we truly appreciate it. Uh, any last thoughts on the game before we head on out, my friend? Two words. Go Lakers. Absolutely. Great words indeed. Go Lakers indeed. But if you have a chance, everyone, please subscribe today to get the latest notifications. I'm hoping that Magic Man will put in some snack packs. I gave him the uh, opportunity to go ahead and shout out the MVPs, so if he can go ahead and do so, That'd be great on an upcoming show tomorrow, maybe in a preview for Minnesota Lakers. We'll see what happens. But I'll tell you what, more great content is coming your way. Of course, the playback.tv. I just got a, a word back from playback that they are go for the play in tomorrow. So please join us on playback.tv slash Lakers fast break. Also, as well, the post game show tomorrow. But we're looking forward to a great game from. LeBron, AD, and the rest of the Lakers. So please join us for that. And plus, we've got shows lined up for you for the rest of the week and throughout the playoffs. We're going to go ahead and not slow down a bit. We're on the cusp of being one of the top 100 basketball shows on Apple Podcasts, and it's all because of you. So I truly appreciate it. And once again, thank you so much for being a part of what we do here. The West is certainly, as Adam says it, right there for you. The West is certainly up for grabs. We hope the Lakers, yeah, absolutely. And we hope the Lakers can go ahead and grab a piece of the pie and go ahead all the way to a finals showdown against somebody in the East. So that starts tomorrow. The journey starts tomorrow for the Lakers. Hopefully we can have even more coverage tomorrow. We will for post game. You know that. And we're looking for more. And we'll try to do it right here for you at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. And have a great evening.